Hi and welcome to another video here on my channel Morbid History. Today I just want to give a tiny warning before we all go into this story that there will be young children hurt, <laughs> sadly. Um, so if that's a trigger or something that you just don't want to see, then I'd suggest that you skip this video. The year was 1917. A young single mother was desperately searching for her son. He had seemed to disappear into thin air. She contacted the police and what would later unravel is the story of Sweden's first female serial killer. Engla Makerskan. We need to back up the tape to our main character in this story, Hilda Nilsson. Who was she? Born in 1876, she didn't seem to have a very troubled childhood, but the troubles would come later on. What we know about her is that she got pregnant fairly young, and the man, the dad, left her alone. So she was an unwed single mother in the early 1900s, which isn't the greatest position to be in. It was very frowned upon and socially unacceptable. We, we know that she lived uh, with a lady while her baby was young and at some point they both got kicked out. This was during winter, so it was very cold outside. Both Hilda and her young, young daughter got sick, being homeless out in the southern parts of Sweden during winter, which sadly the little one did not survive. This took a toll on Hilda mentally, of course. For the next five years after that, she would be working as a prostitute, and she got syphilis. Times were indeed extremely rough for her. Things started to look up though, when she finally met a firefighter named Gustav. From all accounts, this was a very good man. He wasn't even an alcoholic as... Um, Almost everyone was, of course, especially in the lower classes. Which he, he wasn't even, because he was a firefighter, so they had uh, good money there for a while, until he hurt his eye and had to take a different job, which paid less. This put an economic strain, of course, on their little family, which now actually even... Uh, included a foster child, a little boy. They never had any biological children, which could of course come from the hard times she lived during those five years of prostitution and syphilis. They lived in a little tiny place called Bruksgatan 5. And here is where things get very, very dark. Since Gustav wasn't bringing in enough money anymore, Hilda also had to try to make some money to get the household running. And one day she looked in the newspapers and realized that there were many, many single moms, poor single moms, that needed to place their children in foster care. Hilda soon realized that, hey, we already have a foster child and that's going super well. He's healthy and learning Latin and everything. They were, they were just doing great with that one. So they thought that they can take in foster kids because, of course, that would mean money. They would get paid for the children that they bring into their home and take care of. In 1915, this plan was on a roll. The first 
child that they took in was just a little five month old girl. This girl turned out to be a handful. She was crying every night and caused insomnia and the neighbors started like shouting and hitting the walls and telling them to shut the baby up. We don't know why Hilda took this first step. Maybe it was a mental breakdown. Maybe she had some trauma from her own child dying, crying out in the winter cold. But what she did was the start of this whole fiasco. She took the tiny crying baby girl and placed her in a little tub filled with cold water, upside down in the tub. She then placed a washboard over it and another tin bucket for weight. And then she just waited until she could hear that the child had gone silent. This was the first murder of Hilda Nilsson. The day after she took the baby, swaddled it and burned it in the oven. This kind of modus operandi would continue for two more years. The reason why people think that she got away with it for so long was that she actually took very good care of her home and her clothing and everything was very clean and neat. Most women who took care of foster children were so poor and dirty that it was just like such an unusual sight to see Hilda who looked so proper and that already had this young foster child at home that seemed very healthy and good natured. No one actually believed that she would be capable of doing these things, but she did. Sometimes the children didn't even survive the first hour in the home. She would actually kill seven more babies in this way and kept the money saved up in a little drawer. Her husband Gustav didn't even seem to understand what was happening. Every time a child came and went, she told him that a rich family had come by and picked them up to be their new foster parents. She also sent the families that had placed their children with her letters where she wrote about uh, the development of the kids and all these things just so she could try and get more money from them, even though they were already dead by this point. I read that at some point one of the mothers came back because they regretted it and wanted their child back. At that instance Hilda just lied and said that the child had sadly passed away by natural causes. I think she was feeling pretty much invincible, but that was soon to come to an end. A young mother called Blenda came to Hilda with her son Gunnar. Blenda was of course very poor and had to work so she couldn't be at home to take care of Gunnar, but she by no means did, didn't love him. She reluctantly gave away Gunnar to Hilda, but she paid her extra for being able to hear about him and even maybe visit him again. Hilda was more than glad to take the extra cash, but she had absolutely no plans on keeping the boy alive. Instead, she lied and said that her sister, somewhere up in northern parts of Sweden, had decided to take care of Gunnar. Just because she knew that Blenda was way too poor to go there and visit him. 
and Hilda thought that that would be the end of it. Blenda, though, was a headstrong woman. She tried contacting the little town up in northern Sweden to find an address to the sister so she could get a hold of Gunnar and uh, find out what he, how he was doing. Hilda found out about it and told Blenda then that Gunnar had also died and there was nothing she could do. He had been buried up there. Blenda, in full sorrow mode of course, tried to contact the, the church where Gunnar would have been buried so she could buy some flowers for his grave. The church warden was confused and said there's no child called Gunnar here who's been buried in the past year. This really set something off, of course, in Blenda. Because this just does not seem right, any of it. She contacted the police. Soon the police unraveled everything. Hilda actually just told them everything. Maybe from guilt, maybe from just n not being able to, to bear what she had done anymore. Or just knowing that she had no way to get out of this trouble. Either way, Hilda was sentenced to death and uh, placed in Landskrona prison. The information would not come to her before they found her hanged in 1917 in her prison cell in Landskrona. So I was actually debating if I wanted to do this true crime video because I have a hard time with children being hurt. Um, but I thought that it's it's one of the biggest like true crime cases in Sweden, so it, it fits here and it's an interesting one too. I mean angel makers is not just a, a thing in Sweden, uh, there's lots of them, there's the baby farmers I think they're called in the UK. Um, so there's lots of info if you wanna google that. I hope you found this video informative. And uh, my next videos will actually be a two-part series about the witch trials in Sweden. Uh, they began in the 1600s and it's a wild ride. So stay tuned for that. Please just uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that. It always makes me so happy. And thank you for being here. See you next time. Also, of course, because I almost forgot, but cheers to my patrons! You're, you're, you're just like, ugh, my besties. Cheers to Smiles the Cynic and cheers to Professor Rebel. Thank you so much for being patrons. You're the best. Extra kisses for you.